The hardest part of creating your ebook is going to be that cover. You are not alone. So let's go ahead, jump right into my screen and design the ebook cover. And then we will go through how to get all of your text and graphics and create images for your ebook. Just as a little asterisk, this is not for Kindle, but I'll go through if what to do if you want to use Canva for Kindle. Timestamps below. Let's go ahead and jump right in here. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you don't already have an idea of what you want your ebook cover to look like is to of course use canvas templates right so all we have to do is type in ebook i've gone ahead and loaded up the results here and i recommend going through here and seeing if you can find one that you think makes sense for your book now a lot of these really are great for fiction but i've found that in terms of if you're creating an ebook that is a little more utilitarian or you're going to be offering it as a lead magnet these don't really seem to fit very well so the second search i recommend you do is head over to the search box again and then search for reports so i've found that i am able to find covers in the report section that are a lot easier to work with and less design intensive especially if you're not doing this for kindle um, you don't have to be as fancy with your cover I also recommend give yourself an hour to figure out what you want your cover to look like and then just go with whatever your latest image is. It's, it's so easy to take days upon days to make a cover. So to save us some time, I'm going to go ahead and build a cover from scratch just so you can see how to put one together from scratch as well as all of the features you have in Canva, of course. And of course, timestamps below if you want to skip around. So this is the approximate cover that I'll go ahead and be creating. So I'll go ahead here and add a new page. Apologies for the fan. It was nice and quiet until until we started, <laughs> until we started recording. That seems to be how it goes. So we'll go ahead and start off with a blank page. So for a very basic design, I recommend coming up to here we can click on templates and you can always scroll through the results that are already there and try different combinations, right? So if you choose one on the main templates page, don't feel like you're locked in. You'll be able to see all of the other style templates here as well. So I'm actually going to come over here to background and I'm going to click on gradients and then I'll go ahead and choose a gradient here. I'll just choose this blue one. And of course you can actually customize the gradients a little bit. So if we wanted to do a darker blue or a green, we could. I'll go ahead and leave it at that light blue here. And then the next thing we're going to need is a title, of course. So I'll come over here to elements and click on shapes. So one way I like thinking about ebook covers, especially if you're doing a free offer, is to think of it as a giant YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> so this is actually something very similar we do for YouTube thumbnails. So I'm going to want to have the text a different color and because the, of the way the gradient looks, it's going to be hard to read the text. So I'll come over here to text and then I will go ahead and just choose heading. Now you see here we have a lot of options, but I'll also show you how to customize the, the text once you've used the plain the plain text element. So this is called how to create is going to be the first line. So that's what I'll type in here. And then I will click and drag the text to be right over the background square I have here, or rec rectangle now. Started as a square, now it's a rectangle. And then I can highlight all the text and you have some options here. So we're able to, of course, change the font style. I recommend doing no more than two font styles across your entire ebook. Uh, if you want to do a third style, if you're doing quotes or you have something special, but three, like absolute max. After that, it starts to look pretty messy. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the, the my default here, and I'm going to click on effects, and I'm going to drop shadow. So I really like dropping shadow. Um, these effects I recommend you playing with because they are a really quick way to differentiate your ebook other than just using plain old text here. And of course, it's not popping as much as I want, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and bring it up to 50. So I'll go ahead and recenter the text here. And then let's go ahead and change the color. So we can click on the color here. And I'm going to click on one of our brand colors. Now on the free plan, you can save a couple of colors. And then on the paid plan, you can actually have lots of different uh, brand colors if you'd like. And then we'll go ahead and increase the font size a little bit more. I think 60 is where it was. So we'll go ahead and recenter it and then I'll worry about formatting later. And now that I have that title squared away, I'll go ahead and highlight, and then Control D on Windows, Command D on a Mac to duplicate the element. 
And that way I don't have to go clicking, clicking and dragging again. I can just get the exact same formatting here. So this is going to be customer. And this time I'm going to make the text white because I'm going to change the background of the box. Again, if you don't wanna go through building the actual cover and you feel like you've got a good handle on Canva, then go ahead and use the timestamps below to skip ahead to when we go through the actual text pages and how to get the text properly formatted. So here I'm going to go ahead and choose white and then I will need to click and drag the text down so I can change the background color of this. And this is going to be a nice bright orange. Then I'll go ahead and make the text box a little smaller and pull it towards the center. And you'll see why we do that in a moment here. Okay, it's centered. And then we'll go ahead and change the size of this as well. So it's right on customer. And then we'll go ahead and click and drag to select both elements. And now we can make the text and the box bigger at the same time. Go ahead and click and drag, and then go ahead and move it to the side. So we'll go ahead and skip ahead to when I have the headlines complete because I think you've got a good idea of what the process looks like. Now the next thing you want to do is have your brand name of course or your name on the cover as well as a link to your website because this is going to be in a PDF format you're actually going to be able to create hyperlinks here. So we'll go ahead and take this text this element I'll duplicate it again control D on Windows command D on a Mac. I'll bring it down here saves you a lot of time. You can go ahead and copy paste as well I just like I just like using duplicate. Uh, there we go. And we'll go ahead and make it nice and small. We'll go ahead and add some text, of course, skipping ahead for time purposes, and then drop in our logo. There we go. And to go ahead and make this hyperlinked, all you need to do is come up to the top right, click on the two paper clips, and you'll be able to type in the link that you want it to go to. I recommend just having this go to your homepage. You'll be able to make call to action links later on in your ebook if you want. And of course, we need some graphics right here because there's a lot of blank space. So we will come over here to photos and search for something to the effect of customer avatar. And a quick tip when you're doing searches, you can click on the settings and you can go ahead and click on availability free and apply that filter. That way you're only looking at the free options. None of these are actually going to, now that I've done this, none of these are looking like they're going to work too well for this. So I'll actually click up here to elements and then click on graphics. And then I will search for customer avatar and see what we get. It's weird, why would you be showing noses? And I had to change my search from customer avatar to just customer because I was getting a lot of things that weren't actually helpful. So for time purposes, I'm just going to select a few elements here and try and make them work. Of course, this is going to be one of the more time consuming parts of the process, playing with the different images that you use and of course the different graphics. So for the sake of not watching, of not having me go through every single possible combination, we'll go ahead and leave it at that. Of course, what we were able to put together uh, off camera looked a whole lot better. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the basics of what you can do with Canva and how to work with the basic formatting. So now let's go ahead and talk about your actual content pages themselves. So when it comes to your content pages, I recommend creating something called a frame. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this page. I'm going to go a little faster since I'm going to assume you know how to use Canva now. And I'll go ahead and delete all but these elements here. Come on, don't, there we go. And what a frame is, is essentially some sort of design that's going to be on every single page. I recommend having either a bar at the top or at the bottom, and then of course having a page number here. And scrolling through, you can see that the top and bottom bars and the page numbers are in the same place for each of the text pages. And that's all you need to do. That's really all the design that you need to do with the actual inside of the ebook. You're going to spend 80% of your time uh, actually designing the cover and hopefully making one that looks way better than the one we just slapped together in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and talk about the text. So 
This is the frustrating part about Canva, and this is, just comes with the territory of using a tool like this. I recommend, of course, typing out everything that needs to be in your ebook ahead of time, and mostly because it just uses a different part of your brain, right? So I have a Word, Word doc or Google doc here, and it has all of the text that I want in my ebook, and it is formatted in plain text, so it would be easy to copy and paste. Now, this is the time consuming part. Do you have to copy and paste each individual item that you want? Yes. So to save us some time, I'm not going to I'm not going to subject you to that, but I'll just come down to this page so you can see that we use a headline element for whatever the title of the particular page is. Then we use text boxes for what we actually want to put on the page. So if I come back over here and I'm doing number one demographics, so I'll go ahead and take demographics and I will copy this information. So copy, and then I will have to literally paste it in and of course change it so it's not bold. And then I'll have to go back and copy the next one. Now you can go ahead and copy and paste as much text as you want, although you'll have to make a new text box every time you have an image. So in this particular instance, after A, Google Analytics, there is an image that I want to show of Google Analytics. So inside of Canva here, we went ahead and inserted that image, probably make it a little bigger here. And this is the way I recommend inserting images. Just have it in one, have your ebook in one column. This is not a magazine. You don't need to be super fancy. People want to digest the information. And I recommend having no more than two images per page. And so if we scroll down here, you'll see that this page just has one image. Of course, it's not, we want to do something with this white space down here. But if we come up to our first page, you'll see that we didn't actually have any images. So what you can do to spruce up a page that is just a wall of text like this is to look for some white space where you can insert an icon. So as an example, we could put an icon in the bottom right here, which is a common place, or we could put an icon where it was before. So let's just say this is relevant to uh, choosing our customer profile. So I just go ahead and take the take the icon here. Wow, my computer is so slow right now. And then click and drag it to the white space. And that's all the design that you need to do inside. Again, it is really easy to overdo it with the graphics and images. And per the licensing, you should have you should not have any issues with using these inside of your ebook. Of course, if you're doing anything like mugs and t-shirts, I definitely recommend you check the terms of service and licensing for all of the graphics and images. And so that is how you copy and paste things from a basic document into Canva. Now, before we move on, I want to quickly talk about Kindle eBooks. So number one, I recommend using a Google Doc, just a plain text format like this. Actually, don't even use bullet points or numbers. And then go ahead, or you can use numbers. Don't use the auto, don't use the, don't use the auto formatting. So you'd have to make the number like this if you want to uh, publish to EPUB. And then what you'd want to do is come up here to file and download and then the EPUB format. So that's how you would go about using Canva for Kindle. And then you can go ahead and create your graphics in Canva, but drop them into this Word doc so you can easily export it into the EPUB format. So with that Kindle, <laughs> Kindle disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and come down to the final part of your ebook, which is going to be most likely be some sort of call to action. So the way to create this button, there's two ways you can do it. All right, and we'll come over here to elements. Oh, forgot, let's just X out a customer. We'll go to shapes here. And there are two shapes I recommend using. I really like using this square element that has a shadow to it. And but you can also use this square element with rounded corners. So since the rounded corners is on the page already, I'll go ahead and delete that one. And this one, you can actually change the color of the front and the shadow. So this is the shadow. So I'll go ahead and change the shadow to this turquoise, and then I'll change the main color to a blue. Oh, nope, that's the outline. The main color to the blue, there we go. And then what you'd want to do, is we'll click and drag, make this smaller, and then click and drag this over, and go ahead and have text that says click here. So what we would do, instead of just saying watch now, 
we would say click here to watch now. We'll go ahead and center this text and then we can click and drag it to center it on the button. And then what you'd want to do is select all the elements and group them together. So we can come up here and click on group. And then once we do, we can click on the paper clips again and have a link. So this can be a link back to the course. This could be a link to your product page, another offer that you have, any place on your website or membership site under the sun you can link to here. And I recommend having that just so it's really easy for people to take the next step or go back to their course. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. And most importantly, you have an idea of what you can do with Canva to create your ebook. Go ahead and comment below with your design questions. Hit that like button for more videos just like this one. And until the next, keep building the business you love.